My heart dances her way. Dr. Gregory Ross was my excellent cardio doc. You have a partial right bundle block, which is typical of a man your age, John. Nothing to worry about, but I should mention it to you. Have you seen your heart ultrasound? It looks beautiful. Except for the bundle block, I'd say your heart is in perfect shape. Indeed, my beating heart did look beautifully graceful, balletic even, and elegant, sloshing around in fluid. Skirplosh, kerplosh, skirplosh, never stopping. For these almost 69 years, even to go to the toilet. I thought all was over, but no, I still must do the dubiotamine stress echo test. When, Dr. Ross? Well, John, we can't take it until February 10th. I want to do the best because Dr. Hebb asked that I sign off on this. Yes, another delay. Tara, the appointment gal, promised to call if there's a cancellation. I say, whiskey, tango, foxtrot. And I imagine I'll say it again. Dr. Ross looked at me squarely. You really ought to get a stationary bicycle and start exercising. I'll do it. I like him, and I know just where I'll put it, near the studio. It feels now like it'll be 4th of July before all this is done. Now let's fast forward to just a week ahead. An elephant on my chest, an elephant never met in hiding awaits me, undressed to the waist for Heather's orders, I wait as a soldier in battle. How did all these millennial kids get here, I wonder, inquiring about her age? Well, I'd say less than 30, all Copenhagen blonde and all business. Heather is a thistle in a coat. Candace, all Apollonian, patrician and professional, my prep nurse, everything off. And don't tie the gown. Candace earns her pay with a painless IV, left forearm top side. As Terry, tardy, wench like Mary does, bedside check. James Dilworth, a physician's assistant, looks like a young Warren Beatty, confidently briefs me, then graciously disappears. Within minutes, I'm gurneyed into the brilliantly lit OR and meet my two excellent cardiologists, Dr. Ross, who I talked about just before, and Dr. Christopher Lang. Sedated with something called cardiac champagne by Dr. Tom, my chubby anesthesiologist, Dr. Ross, makes a puncture wound in my right femoral artery about three inches from my sizable genitalia. Into my right leg threads a tube through the aorta and into the top of my heart. An x-ray machine one inch above my chest shows all this to expert eyes. Iodine dye pumped into my heart instantly finds its way illuminating every artery. Egad! 90% blockage in one 70% 70% in another. Within minutes, these are dilated with a small balloon and held up by a small tube. Full blood flow now restored. The puncture wound plugged with a man-made blood clot. I'm good to go with a new heart. Beware the plug, doctor says. Don't disturb this gizmo, I am warned. If it comes undone, you'd bleed to death in five minutes. Dr. Lang says, there was just a thread size artery left. Consensus among the docs was that the 
The stress of my planned brain surgery almost certainly would have led to a heart attack during surgery. Afternoon slept through, led to friends, visits, reflection on finitude, the humbling art of music, my soul's voice. I listen now to my treasured early morning solitude voices, to Elgar's intro and allegro, full of life and full of confidence in the beautiful. A boyish 69 in a few weeks, I believe I'll be a boyish 99 in 2045, when my centennial year will reckon hard on me. My small contributions to humanity, Musa del Arte speaks to me. You've got work to do, John. Let go of your Sunday morning blankets. Let's roll. Love the muse has again bade me welcome. And this time, I shall not draw back. It is remarkable, isn't it? This is John Kuzma, music for a while. Shall all your cares beguile?